With WWE now entering this new Triple H Polovec Renaissance era, I want to make sure I say it right, um, the one question a lot of fans have is, will we start seeing blood again? Now, we saw basically two weeks before WrestleMania that The Rock made Cody Rhodes bleed, and they didn't shy away from it. And he made him bleed profusely. We saw that. So in this new era, if you will, this new era, the question obviously is, will we see more? And I think with Triple H and Nick Khan and The Rock uh, running things behind the scenes, and the fact that we're heading towards the Netflix deal at the beginning of 2025, I believe there is going to be more of a reliance on blood uh, when needed. I mean, they pretty much have said that they want to get away from the PG era and get more into being a pro wrestling company again that still has tidbits of the sports entertainment aspect to it, but more reliance on the pro wrestling, like what made pro wrestling cool from, the in, not, from not just the in-ring action, but from the storylines that captivated you and everything like that. And to me, knowing that they want to go you know, in that direction, in this renaissance era, if you will, you know, under Triple H and The Rock and Nick Khan, then I could definitely say that, yes, we will see blood again, but only when necessary. And there are a lot of feuds that are going to be happening within this year that I truly believe are going to have some blood utilized within them. I mean, the bloodline civil war that's coming up, obviously you're going to get some blood there. I mean, the Rhea and Liv Morgan feud, that's going to have some blood because pretty much you have Rhea looking straight into the camera at Liv, you know, and talking straight to Liv Morgan before she comes out to taunt her that when she comes back from her injury, she's coming for blood. And to me, when somebody says that, that basically means they're going to make that individual or have the intentions to make that individual bleed. And I truly believe it. I truly believe that based on the way she looks straight into that camera, very, you know, very straight on, serious, almost like very Undertaker-like vibes, if you will, from what people have said, I truly believe she'll want to make, if not will, make Liv Morgan bleed upon her return. But the question is, how will this all be achieved? How will we see blood be utilized when it comes to certain feuds? Well, I think like with the bloodline, the Civil War, I think obviously you've got to save the blood for maybe war games. Because if your plan is to do some kind of a war games match between you know, the bloodline uh, factions, Team Solo, a.k.a. Rock, as some people are assuming, and Team Roman, you know, you're going to have to save it for that. You're going to have to save it for that because the way they're basically building up the solo side of the bloodline, you know, they're going to be more vicious, more violent. They're going to be out for blood. So the best way to, you know, emphasize that is the War Games match and for them to draw blood in that match. And I think that's the one thing that Triple H has been wanting to get back to. He's been wanting to get back to the war games match to where, yes, you can have your own version of the double ring, you know, steel cage event open with, you know, with an open ceiling, you know, where, you know, the superstars can, you know, perform aerial acrobatics off that. You can have all that. Don't get me wrong. But the one thing people have always complained about is that the blood was missing. There was no blood. And war games, when Dusty Rhodes came up with it, was always known for doing that. It was always known for incorporating blood into the matches in some capacity. Now, true, under the Jim Hurd and Bill Watts era, mostly Jim Hurd, you know, they kind of, you know, strayed away from that. But there, there were times, you know, excuse me, that we did see it. There were times we did see it. So I could see blood being utilized, you know, for the War Games match. I could see that. I could see blood being utilized for the War Games match. But what else? What else can I see? Well, I, I've been thinking about this too, and it's kind of ironic that on Twitter slash X, you know, they were, you know, on the uh, 
Twitter page of on this day, WWE, if you will. They showed footage, if not nine minutes, of the uh, Mick Foley Randy Orton match from 20, uh, from 2004 from Backlash, and WWE just posted a three minute 17 second uh, video, a reaction video with Randy Orton and Mick Foley looking back on that, and seeing that it kind of gives me the the vibes that we could be looking at something with Rhea and live in a similar fashion. Now, you might scoff at that, but the way they're building this up, both of them basically taking credit for injuring the other's shoulder and stuff, to me, honestly, I can't think of any other kind of, you know, way that these two could really settle things before it really, you know, gets started. And to me, having a match, maybe no disqualification, and trying to maybe be the female equivalent of Mick and Randy could be a path they go down. You know, so that way, you know, blood is drawn. But then on the other hand, I think the most likely scenario is they're going to do hell in a cell. And if Rhea's trajectory return is in about three months, that's good enough for a SummerSlam return, right? So what better atmosphere for Rhea to return in against Liv Morgan than at SummerSlam for the Women's World Championship if Liv is champion and within Hell in a Cell? You know, that way you have a reasoning for Liv or Rhea, if not both, to bleed. Because pretty much what WWE seems to be trying to do here is make this into a blood feud, you know, and they're basing it off the fact that both injured each other and took each other out of the equation. You know, Liv got taken out for about eight months, storyline-wise, by Rhea uh, last year. Now, Rhea has been taken out by Liv, you know, for the next three months. And on top of that, because of it, she had to relinquish her Women's World Championship, which she did not want to do. And there's no doubt they're going to put the belt back on her, so that way she can continue her run. But in the meantime, obviously, giving it to Liv might add fuel to the fire, and it would give a reasoning for Rhea to not only have a rematch that she'll be entitled to, but in return, she'll get to name the match, or the, na- the match will be named to ensure that this situation between the two comes to an end before it really gets started. And I could see them... I could see them basically uh, going with Hell in a Cell, and I could see some blood being utilized there by both women. Might be more so Liv than Rhea, but we'll see. The other kind of scenario, storyline-wise, I could see blood being incorporated in would be the Rock and Cody feud. We know that when Rock comes back, he's coming after Cody, whether Cody's champion or not. So I could see that being... You know, a moment to where uh, we see blood, you know, being spilled. We saw it already when Rock storyline rise took out Cody weeks before WrestleMania. So it wouldn't shock me in the slightest. It wouldn't shock me in the slightest if we see it happen again, but this time in a match. So I could see when the Rock and Cody get it on, whether it's at SummerSlam or later or whenever they can get the match, you know, to happen. I could see, you know, blood being spilled. I could see it. And I think it would be Cody that spills it, but spills it in victory. The other one I think that could have blood utilized is Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. We know CM Punk's going to come back probably in time for SummerSlam as well. So I could see if, you know, Drew's still around at that time, which he will be, You know, he hasn't said anything yet, but I think they're telling him, hey, don't say anything until your your contract, your current contract is up. And then afterwards, then you can let it know or let it be known that you've resigned or we'll let it be known you've resigned. So I've got a feeling he's resigned. They just can't say anything until the current contract is up. But anyway, I could see blood being spilled between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, just the way they're building off of that. But yeah. You know, those are just examples, excuse me, those are just examples, in my opinion, of the possibility of blood being utilized once again to really emphasize a story and a match, you know, and the story within the match. You know, those are just my opinions. The bloodline, Rhea and Liv, 
you know, Rock and Cody, Drew and CM Punk. I think anybody listening to this or watching this, depending on what platform you're, you know, listening or watching it on, I think anybody would agree that, yeah, those matches would fit perfectly with the, use of the, with the usage of blood within the matches and to build up the feud. But what do y'all think? Do you think, you know, we will, do you think we will see blood again? Because obviously it looks like we are. And do you think the feuds, the storylines that I've just mentioned and the matches that would encompass them or accompany them, I should say, do you think those matches will rely on the blood usage to really emphasize the story within the match and as we build towards said match? Let me know down below in the comments below the live chat during the premiere if you're watching on YouTube. And until then, I'll talk to you later.